Uh, it's been amazing. You know, it's been a lot of support, um, especially uh, going through uh, rehab. So that's all I really wanted at this point. And uh, there's been that and much more. So everything's been cool so far. Kevin, how's it going? Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Um, Kyrie was talking about his relationship with different guys and how he's able to kind of bring you here with him. Can you kind of talk about how you guys' relationship has built over the years and just what it's like now to be on the same team now and going forward for the next four years? Yeah, man, we got to build that mutual respect for somebody, especially uh, following since high school, um, kind of following each other's careers. And um, it's very rare we could meet up at this point and have a, a decision in front of us where we can control our destinies. And um, we sat down and talked about it and what basketball meant to us as, as, as a whole. And, you know, I think this is the perfect spot for us to hone our skills and continue to keep growing. So, you know, it was, uh, it was one of those things you just, uh, it kind of happened organically and we kind of moved just pretty smooth with it. Kevin, uh, Greg Logan of Newsday, can you also tell us, uh, he said that, that what better place to start than with the Nets and the, the core of guys they had grown. How did that discussion go? You know, there was so much talk about you guys would go to the Knicks and so on. How did, how did you wind up choosing the Nets themselves and what did you see? I mean, we fans of basketball and we know it pretty well. And it's uh, really easy to see, you know, what these guys brought to the table. So. Um, it's not like I had to do any deep analysis on any player here. I mean, just watching games and playing against them and seeing a continuity throughout the last couple of years is uh, pretty easy to kind of figure out what kind of team this, and kind of organization this, uh, this place is. Kevin, Brian Lewis from the New York Post, front row here. Um, when Kyrie was just up here, he was talking about, um, I guess, his relationship with you, and he was mentioning that He'll never go out and say, hey, I, I expect Kevin will be back X day or Y day because he says, you know, the guy was put on the floor before he was ready to play, and we see the result of that. I'm going to protect him from that. Um, I'm just curious your reaction to hearing that from him, and I take it that's basically a window into the kind of relationship that you guys have formed? Look, I mean, when I, when I went down, it felt like... Everybody wanted to put their arms of protection around me from people I didn't know to, you know, my best friend and Kyrie, you know. So I felt like everybody was real protective of me around this time. Uh, and I feel like they would, they would continue to be that way, especially involving my health. Um, but I make my own decisions. Kevin, Gerard Hector, BSO. You know, Kyrie talked about the personal side of it, that you guys are humans, not just basketball players. I know that's something you talk about regularly as well. What's going to be different for you when Kyrie talked about that, and what are you going to sort of share with your teammates in terms of making sure that that side of you, the personal side, is taken care of and everything is good so that you can do what you want to do when you show up at, at the arena and in practice? I don't get what you're trying to say. Kyrie's basically, Kyrie said that it's important that we're human. He was talking about his grandfather dying, and, you know, sometimes basketball is not the most important thing, and you've often mentioned the same. So for you, how are you going to approach that in terms of balancing, balancing both? I mean, we're veterans. I mean, just because we talk about it, uh, don't mean we don't have it balanced. I think it's, uh, we, when we talk about things like that, it's just an inside look into what we're thinking as basketball players really thinking that you want to hear what we got to say so you know at this point in our lives we're accomplished so much and we fought through learning how to balance both and it's hard to do that but I think we me and Kyrie especially gone through so much in this league understand exactly what we need to do to maximize our talents every day and to be great people off the floor Kevin over here to your left Justin Walters files one Kenny Atkinson mentioned too long ago that he thought that your presence alone would help the team and that you'd be able to help the coaching staff. I'm curious what type of role you plan to have with the team while at practice and during your rehab, and do you think that it can really help them play well and mesh together as just yourself when you're able to re-enter the lineup? Uh, I mean, just be a teammate. I mean, I'm not going to do anything extra. Uh, just do what I usually do. I mean, 
come in and work hard at my rehab and hopefully that sends a great message out. You know, if anybody has a question on anything, whether they're in practice or in the game, um, I know the game pretty well, so I can answer those questions as quick as quickly and honestly uh, as I can and just try to approach it as in an everyday manner and, you know, try to take it a day at a time. You know, I'm not planning to do anything. I'm just, just going to be myself. Uh, Kevin, um, to your rights, Michael Lee with The Athletic. I um, just want to ask you how you plan on approaching this year. I know how much basketball means to you and how much it's always uh, been a shelter for you, but now that it won't be there, um, how do you plan on approaching this upcoming year where the game may not be there for you? It's still there. I just don't, I'm just not playing in NBA arenas at 7 p.m. The game is always going to still be there. I still can walk into the gym and shoot shots and work on my game. Uh, Kevin, uh, Mike Mazzia right over here from Yahoo Sports. Um, a lot was made of that talk you had with Kyrie at the All-Star game. Just kind of wondering, you know, how that fr how your friendship kind of started. You called, you know, said he's your best friend. And, uh, you know, did you guys think even at the All-Star game that this was a possibility you could play together? Yeah, I mean, really doesn't matter how we became friends. I mean, I don't really think that's a huge topic. You know, I think... Um, we're friends with, I mean, you cross paths with all these basketball players, you know, whole life, you know, basically, especially once you get out into the circus. So it's not like we sat down and said, you know, Kyrie, you're my friend. You know, it was just, just kind of happened, you know. So um, where anything's possible, we feel, in life. Uh, Kevin, Steve Lichtenstein, WFAN, to your left. Um, we hear a lot about the Nets performance team and training staff. I was curious what your interactions have been so far, and is it different than in the other places you've been? Uh, I mean, I, I, the great thing about the NBA is that, you know, teams are investing more and more into, you know, supporting other players, whether it's from, you know, mentally, obviously physically, and so I wouldn't say it's better or, you know, worse than any other place, but I think it's just top of the line and elite, and I think that's just what the NBA is as a whole. So every every program is at that level now. Ian Begley from SNY. Kevin, any team with <clears throat> cap space this summer, I'm sure would have loved to sign you, but it seemed like um, the Clippers, Golden State, the Knicks, and the Nets were those teams that were the serious suitors. Uh, how seriously did you consider the Clippers, Golden State, and the Knicks before you made your decision to come here? I thought about it for a couple seconds and see how my life would look in all of those places for a minute, but ultimately I wanted to be here. Hey, uh, Kevin, Stephen Body with the New York Daily News. A couple days ago, Sean was saying that the expectation of the team is that you will not play next season. I'm just curious, in your mind, what do you think? I mean, do you think that you can return this season, or do you even? I mean, me and Sean have been in contact since day one, so if he says it, then it came from me. It, we came together and make, made sure that was the message. So, yeah, I mean, anytime he comes up here and says something, you don't have to ask me right after him because I'm going to say the same thing. That's how we think in the day. The same exact thing he said last week is what I'm thinking right now. Hey, Kevin, Adam Zagoria from Forbes, how you doing? Um, it seems like the NBA is more wide open, you know, this year than in the past five or six years. There's no team that's favored to win it. Um, do you agree with that? Do you see that it's more wide open than it has been? And, and how do the Nets fit into that in the next couple of years, attempting to contend for a title? Uh, yeah, I, just, I mean, I just think the landscape is different. I want to say more open. I think um, a lot of you guys probably favor the Clippers as a team to beat. Um, so, uh, you know, every year is a team to beat, team you think is going to win. But, every, you know, just like last year, Toronto came out of nowhere. Mo Milwaukee came out of nowhere after losing in the first round the previous year to be a finals contender. So each year I think teams are getting better and guys are improving. And also free agency, half of the league was free agents. So obviously there's going to be a, a landscape change when it comes to the dynamics of the league. So I just think the business of basketball is booming. And the league is always going to be great if the players continue to keep getting better, and you see it every day. So, you know, you never know what you'll see coming for, coming in the future in the NBA, what type of players you'll see in the league. So every year I feel it's wide open. Uh, Kevin, Barbara Barker from Newsday. Um, you said when you thought about other teams, you thought for a minute or two what your life might be like there. When you think about, what do you think, what did you think when you thought your, what your life is going to be like in New York slash Brooklyn, and what did you really like 
both basketball and non-basketball about being here? <clears throat> um, I was doing a lot of YouTube research on like Kenny Atkinson and watching interviews and see how he talked after games and stuff. And I really liked his approach to his craft as a coach. And um, that's what drew me in pretty quickly. Um, I didn't really do too much research on, on other coaches. So I guess I, I guess he always had the leg up. Um, but, you know, once I started to get comfortable with how he, you know, approaches his craft, it's, it started to make me feel at ease, even though I never even had a conversation with him. I could just see it through YouTube and through the clips that, that he was uh, pretty genuine about the game. And, you know, obviously the talks with Kyrie and then watching the team and no one cares and all of this stuff kind of combined at once. And obviously being in the East Coast again was something I was really excited about playing most of my basketball career, either in like the Midwest or West Coast. So I was excited about being at least a few hours from home. So all that stuff played a factor and I thought about it all. And, um, you know, but basketball is probably the main factor. Hey, hey Kevin, uh, Brian Mahoney from the Associated Press. Um, you were obviously an MVP of the World Championships, and so was Kyrie, actually. Um, were you surprised by what happened with the U.S. this summer and uh, knowing you're not going to play a lot of ball this year, will you consider playing again next summer if they're interested? Um, I wasn't surprised um, about uh, Team USA. Um, I thought a lot of those guys were young and still, uh, you know, uh, experiencing a lot in the league and still trying to figure out the uh, international game and uh, I feel like a lot of players dropped out at the last minute too that kind of kind of hurt their momentum and continuity a bit so they had to work on the fly I think so I wasn't expecting great results but uh, I feel like a lot of those guys got a, a great experience out of that especially Joe being a part of that group I think it's going to do nothing but but help him but as of right now I'm just rehabbing every day I ain't even thought about even shooting a jump shot yet Kevin, Bob Windrum, uh, Nets Daily. Uh, just before Kyrie Irving talked about how you and DJ and he spoke at 4.16 in the morning, the day of free agency. Can you tell us a little bit more about those conversations? <clears throat> I mean, um, we just like, are we ready to do it? And uh, everybody was like, yeah. I mean, it was really that simple. <laughs> I tried to think of something deeper, but it really was that simple. Kyrie, Joe Masiri, Pix11 News. Uh, obviously, you said bas basketball, the main reason that you wanted to come here to Brooklyn, um, but all of the areas that you were considering pretty metropolitan areas, how much does being in the city for you and your brand impact where an NBA player goes in today's basketball? <clears throat> well, I just look, I mean, I'm... I just looked at how I came up in the league. I mean, I came into the league with a lot of expectations, um, you know, having a good college career. So I came in kind of like with some popularity, if, if you if you would say. So market stuff really didn't matter um, coming up. You know, brand and stuff is only how I play on the court, and that's how I kind of looked at it. So if I play well on the court, then that stuff will follow. So it wasn't huge, but I also knew that, you know, who I am right now, being in a big city like this, can do nothing but help my situation. You know what I'm saying? So I looked at that as well. So, uh, yeah, I deserve to live in a good city. I've been in the league for 12 years, and I get to make a decision like this. Of course, I only looked at cities like that. Howard Kassoy, New York Post. Kevin, you obviously were on one of the greatest teams of all time. You won a bunch of titles. And I guess how difficult was the decision to leave there? And I guess how important was it for you to have a new challenge? Did you feel like you had done all you needed to do there? No, I didn't look at it that way. Um, every day is a challenge um, to stay at this level that I'm at. Um, so I never looked at me switching teams as a new challenge. Every day I wake up, I got to fight against that standard I set for myself. Uh, but I felt like it was a time for a change, and I wanted to play for a new team. And simply put, I just did it. I didn't really think about what I was leaving behind or like what we would be accomplished. I put that up on the shelf already. And when it was time to make a decision on my future, I just thought solely about me. Hey, Kevin, uh, Christian Winfield again, New York Daily News. Um, there's been a lot of reports about your relationship with Karras. Um, I'm just, I guess I would like to know how you've watched his game develop over the years and really where that relationship started growing. Uh, really through Adam Harrington. I mean, I've worked with Adam in a 
a critical part of my career when I was transitioning to a different player. And so we built a relationship, and when he got this job, he was um, just wanted me to get in the gym with a few of his players, which was Karras and um, um, Sean Kilpatrick at the time. So, you know, it was just we were just hanging out at the crib every day, then going to the gym, and it was just cool. And that turned into having a relationship and just bouncing texts. And when he came to the city, you know, we hung out. So, like I said, everything kind of happened kind of organically once again. And see his career and see how good a player he's become, I always, I always figure he'd get to this point.